You are very welcome back to the dugout bar in Mahara. It's all with thanks to Guinness 0.0, 100% Guinness and 0% alcohol. More social occasions off the GA pitch are yours for the taking. Before we're done this evening, we will get some thoughts on the weekend's football to come and the football championship at large. But first, we uh, did want to note that we are maybe in proximity to arguably the greatest club on the island. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that controversial? Okay, we have a mixed bag here, do we? Okay. Well, I said maybe, maybe the greatest, maybe the greatest. And to uh, tell us more about Slot Neil, would you give a warm round of applause, please, to Tina Bradley is here. <laughs> now, Tina, hello, first of all. Hello, sir, uh, Joe. Now, I don't want to name names, but it was mentioned that there might be a gent called Patsy who was going to come up on stage as well, but apparently he's feeling a bit shy out there, <laughs> Patsy. Is that right? <laughs> Anyone who knows Patsy will back that up now, so he's, he's left me on my own up here. Um, There'll be words at home later. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, I suppose you're saying we're going to talk about Schlock Neil, and I'm thinking, why am I up here now talking about Schlock Neil? Um, I can only tell you the last five years, so you're everyone blowing. else will. Um, I can only tell you what I've been told anyway over the years and all the nicknames that come with the club, too. So. Well, in some ways, you're, you're perfect then to give us the outsider's view. Um, so even just at a glance at Schlott Neil's success. I know everybody in the room will be very well aware, but just for people listening at home. So, I mean, we're talking across the board stuff here. On the football front, very quickly, Derry club champions in 04, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20. Ulster champions in 04, in 16, and uh, 15, and 17. Beaten All Ireland club finalists in 15 and 17. All Ireland Club Camogie Champions 2017, 2018, 2019 in the final and 20. Ulster Camogie Champions 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. There's a pattern here. You don't, you, don't, you don't need to be John Nash to figure this out. <laughs> and Ulster Club Hurling Champions 2016, 2017, 2019, 2021. What the hell is going on here? And I suppose even to go from the start there, you, you mentioned like the footballers back in 2004. So there's a 10 year gap before they won another county final. And when I moved up five years ago, I said, God, Patsy, you're so lucky, you're always winning. He goes, whoa, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> it goes, like, I suppose so there's that 10 year gap. And you think, I suppose when you, even when you look at a trophy and you think a team wins one, um, you look and see who wins like consecutive all our, our club or um, Ulsters or, provincials or anything like that. Uh, so for it to be such a long gap, obviously there was a lot of work going on in the club uh, to rejuvenate, uh, bring through the youth. And I can't tell you the secret because they haven't told me either. So, <laughs> um, But then to win, I suppose, the, the, the treble was, I think it was just incredible. Um, the stuff of dreams and mm. I suppose Schlock Neil is, I suppose there is just the pitch, and where else would you go only up to the pitch and then into the dugout? So, um, I, look, it's been incredible. And I think it goes back to the foundations of um, the people in the club who've built it um, in terms of the youth. Um, they've had good success in, I suppose, in the schools as well with the Mahara St. Pat's, and, and that feeds through. Um, and then for ourselves at the Kamogi, um, I moved up... Um, 2017, the 1st of April 2017, and the girls had won their first All-Ireland. Um, and I just thought, oh my God, these girls are incredible. Um, and when I'd moved up, I hadn't really thought much about playing Camogie uh, for Schlock Neil. And then Patsy said, sure, why don't you go up the road, you get to know the girls. And Gronio O'Kane lifted me and I went up. I took the dust off the yellow helmet and I'm still playing. Um, but they're just, they were so welcoming and it was very easy. It just, I suppose you think, um, and listening to Eddie Brennan and they're like, you know, a team that's winning all Ireland, you kind of think training is going to be real serious and God, but the crack was really, really good and it never, never felt like an effort to go train and you just rocked up to the pitch, the crack was always good and everyone had a really good, strong mentality like of, you know, winning the ball hard at training and and then we were like fortunate enough to find ourselves back in another all Ireland final. Um, and for me to be part of that then and then again. And um, like, I suppose we had the really unique experience of we played in the All-Ireland Final in Croker and it started snowing. And that's probably one of the biggest standout moments for me um, 
just when we were when the match was over and the snow was falling down and I remember seeing the one of the newspapers afterwards and they called us like the snow queens and I just <laughs> thought it was remarkable what, what we've done. Yeah. Um, it's been incredible, three in a row and then uh, unfortunately then we were unsuccessful in the quest for four but as Eddie said, you're always chasing, you're always Stand. looking for more, you get greedy and... And people may be wondering then, so you're awfully originally yeah, yeah. and then you met Patsy, it was love at first sight in oh, Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that I get is him up to tell that story. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> why he was afraid to come up. <laughs> and that's how you end up here. So, I mean, there's a hint of the accent coming in, I think. Um, of the, oh, well, it was awfully so flat. I, I, you tend to pick up little words here and there. No, no, no. He slags me a bit, but all right. No, no, another so. five years now, you'll pass for a local. Oh, don't say that. No. It's fair <laughs> to say, <laughs> half, half and half. Is everything we this, we that, your wee bag? You'll just have to get past here to answer all these questions. <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose you do. You pick up the lingo uh, a little bit, but um, look, there's still no place like home. And I have great memories back playing with Offaly. We were in uh, the, actually, I remember when I suppose things really kicked off at Offaly back in 2007, Joachim Kelly came in to train us and Joachim is just a really good character, a great way. His daughter was on the team at the time, but she even called him Joe, she didn't even call him daddy. So he came in and it was snowing. It was in November, that time you could start training, you know, before <laughs> January and uh, it was snowing and he pulled us into a huddle and he said, you're going to be in Croke Park next September. And we were looking at each other thinking, does he realise who he's taken here? Well, he's very true to his word. He did have us back. He did have us in Croke Park uh, the following year, and we lost to Clare in the dying minutes of the game. Um, we were up by a point, and they got a goal, and we lost the All Ireland. And then uh, he got us back into another All Ireland final the following year. We'd won. That was a 2008, 2008, and we'd won the first Junior All Ireland. And I had done a J1 at the time, so I told him at the start of the year, I'm going on a J1. Like I, he said, train away, sure, you know, train away and you'll be grand. And we were playing Antrim in the semi-final, and I was in Chicago at the time, and Antrim were, had, the, had Jane Adams. Jane Adams was incredible. And I said, no, they'll not beat Antrim. No, they won't, they won't. Next thing, Jane Adams broke her ribs during the match. We awfully won the match, and we were in all Ireland semi-final then. And then I, I think I came home then, um, I uh, have, haven't trained up to that um, and we won the All-Ireland and then the following year we won the Intermediate All-Ireland and that got us up into the senior ranks um, and then we had John Troy take us for a year so we had some uh, you know some really really unique memories and I loved putting on the Offaly jersey and then I retired then from Offaly four years ago then um, then just had to make a call then. I was yeah. the birds are I was on the wrong side of thirty, so then I decided <laughs> then <laughs> it was time. Look, we get the off the connection, but you're home now, Tina. Just uh, just <laughs> accept it now. This is this is where it's at. <laughs> we had uh, Chrissy McCaig on the show a couple of years ago now and he was um, just talking about Shlot Neil and it seemed like the club is uh, remarkable really in many ways. So for those listening, I'm sure everybody in the room again is very au fait with this, but he was saying established in nineteen fifty three and has always stood for things. And for instance, when there was the hunger strikes in 1981, Slotnil withdrew from competition in solidarity and they were relegated. And uh, he was saying even in the last number of years, and, and maybe you've seen this, but they've put huge effort as well as like winning every tournament they seem to enter. But the Irish language is flourishing and it was a big aim, I think at the turn of the century, at Thomas Cassidy maybe, you've heard his name, yeah. I'm not sure. But he almost wanted to make this a quasi Gwail talked area, and, and Chrissy was saying, you know, the lads just below him, and I suppose younger, and the lads he trains with, they'll be conversing in Irish at training, and he's mm -hmm. thinking, my God, this is, whatever's flourishing here is really remarkable. Uh, and that was probably one of the first things I'd noticed when I um, started training with the girls. They would converse in Irish as much as they would in English. Um, so it's lovely. I suppose it's, it's a big sense of identity up here. Um, you know, for the girls and, and the lads that do converse in the Irish, and you'd pick up the odd words, so you'd be. Did you not arrive uh, with Irish? Um, I suppose we would have done Irish at home, but to converse the whole conversation, um, I wouldn't be. Why to did, think that why we did it all the I way know. up to leave insert. Um, you but could, lad, don't, is, start, um, <laughs> don't start this Irish is the way it's taught. It's not the way it's taught. You just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> Well, look, you're a, you're a Gwail Gore um, and you grew up in it, but uh, we did about 17 years in school. I did 17 years of French. Okay. Can you speak French? Oui. 
right, okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what it is about Irish, but so many of us leave and can't say a word, which is terrible, really. Isn't well, if it? we but stay here long enough, we'll get a few Irish okay. words after a while. Okay. Um, so, you, so you notice that flourishing straight yeah, away? Yeah, um, it is, uh, and it, it's lovely. It's lovely here in um, here in the way they converse in in the Irish, and there is like um, I suppose there's on Karen. Um, so it, I suppose it's all part of the GA community too. Um, they're building a real. I suppose they have the Gale Skull up there as well, and on Cairns beautiful up there. It's nearly like its own little village up there. So a lot of hard work has has gone into it. Um, but it's I suppose it's a huge sense of identity, um, mm. Schlock Neil, and the whole community ethos uh, that follows with it, um, like your family and uh, even we were up there tonight at. Uh, a few of us went to the under six and under eight train and you just, I suppose you're seeing all the kids and you just think this is, this is lovely, this is what's coming next. Um, and like how fortunate they are that they get to drive in and to see the pictures of the cups and this is all what's ahead of them and they're experiencing this now. Um, when the day, I suppose we were, I suppose Patsy and them were there when the days maybe weren't as good and they weren't always coming home with trophies, but, um, Look, there's special occasions, like there's some uh, incredible pictures from in, around the bar, there's some incredible pictures of um, when Francis McEldowney Kate walked in with the cups and that, like their memories you'll have forever. And um, look, everything goes in roundabouts. You know it's not gonna last forever, but you enjoy it while you're, when you're on the train for it anyway, so. I think it's very interesting the way you say, you know, the GA is about community and your friends and your family and who you play with. And I know even from my own point of view, I found it very difficult when I moved out of my county and signed my name to a club in a different county, registering so far away. It was weird. And I wasn't even playing. Like, you coming from Offaly, inter-county, I know you retired and everything, but you came up here to put away that jersey and to actually literally put another jersey on, no matter the welcome. It still must have yeah. felt a bit weird. Yeah, and I, I, I still remember the night that um, we had won the junior um, club uh, with Nave Breed. So we'd won the junior county title and we were having a presentation in Brewerton's um, pub down in Coolary and it was it was it was my send off. And I always remember Patsy saying, God, maybe this isn't right. I'm taking you away from this, but it's just the next chapter in your life and I'm still very close to them girls. Um do you know I played with them all my life and um like they and they've gone on now to do really well. Do you know they compete in the Leinster club as well, and you'd be so so proud. And I suppose for me on both sides, um, a part of me still wish God I'd love to be playing in that Leinster side. You know, but um, look, um, I've been very fortunate to come from one GA community into another. So they welcome me with open arms. I'm very 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 grateful. Um, and then the success, I suppose it, it wasn't even part of that, it was just being able to go up and meet new friends and um, and then everything that came with that, then the nights out after the matches and things like that. So, um, no, look, it, it's been a really, really good journey. It's five years, I can't believe it, you know, you, the time just flies by. Um, but look, there's a lot of great club people and they're, they're very, very proud. Um, and they're very proud of the achievements that they've had. And look, I suppose, you know, we've suffered defeat, I suppose, in the Camogie in the last um, two All-Ireland semi-finals and the footballers similar uh, and even the hurlers as well. Um, but it doesn't take away the desire, you know, it doesn't take the desire to still get back up on that and hopefully be lifting another cup again soon. So probably makes yeah. the desire even stronger. Yeah, um, it does. Like Eddie spoke about the one that was lost and um, and you do. You tend to talk about the ones that you lose more um, when we were um, when myself and Patsy got engaged, we were down in Killarney and um, we said we'd take, uh, we'd go for a walk and we went to Dr. Croke's club and... Did he propose on Dr. Croke's <laughs> <laughs> The halfway line, I'm seeing it now. <laughs> well, actually we walked into Dr. Croke's and the first thing you were met with was with the ball passing the line, um, oh. Anton McMullen going to save it, but it going in. And Patsy's like, oh God, you know, <laughs> happy occasion. And then suddenly, um, but uh, you know, in, it, we t it turned around that, um, you know, there was a, a very sick child there that was presented with the cup uh, alongside Johnny Cooper, that yeah. or Johnny that day. And we actually met his father and he had actually had the mass cards that day. And we met him by pure accident. We were walking, as we were leaving the clubhouse, we met him and he goes, my God, I'm only have to get in the mass cards. Um, um, she had passed away since. And 
Um, he gave us two mass cards, um, and then he invited us out that night to meet all the club people. Right. So, like, if, it just shows you how special the GA is in that way. Um, so it was bittersweet, I suppose. Yes, it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just, I mean, that's an amazing story. And it just goes to show the way you're able to move up here and plug into the community instantly. Anybody who's moved anywhere where there's a GA club understands that feeling. Yeah, so. yeah, I think you do. Um, like, you're very fortunate. So you understand when he's lay home from training, you understand that um, all the gear you have to wash and you understand that you're never at home. I suppose it works both ways, so. Well, listen, thank you very much for coming up and thank braving you. it. We said we wouldn't keep you here all evening and you're fresh from training, so we really appreciate yeah. you coming up and telling us a bit more about Schlock Neil. Uh, everybody, warm round of applause, please, for Tina Bradley. Thank, thank you, Tina. Thank you. Thanks so much.